Hello everyone. Today's video has three points and you're going to want to stick around because the third point is a secret as to the absolute most important thing you should be doing when it comes to negative reviews. So what we're discussing today is I got a negative review on Amazon. By the end of this video, you're going to know the reason you're getting negative reviews on Amazon for your self-published books. You're going to have the necessary steps to properly handle these negative reviews, and you're going to feel great that you're doing everything necessary to keep your books going out and positively selling regardless of the reviews. This is Chris Baird from selfpublishingmadeeasynow.com, where self-publishing doesn't have to be so hard. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like for me to make more videos like this one, and check out below in the description <clears throat> and grab a copy of my absolutely free self-publishing <coughs> checklist, which includes all of the steps necessary to make sure that you're not only getting your books published, but also getting them to sell, which is a problem that many of my clients have experienced. And as you notice, I have a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a cold as I'm currently going through a particular virus, which is not to be named. Moving on to the next uh, thing here. From my own personal story, I'm excited. I was very excited about getting my book onto the market. My very first book and my and several books that followed that. And I suddenly realized the importance of reviews. In fact, a book with three to five stars is going to get, at least from my experience, about 10 times the number of sales than a book with no reviews. We need social proof. And that is one of the reasons why reviews are so important. And often people will ask me and say, well, I don't, I want to use years and years and years to create my book before I put it out because it needs to be perfect because there's so much garbage being put on Amazon. And my comment is get your book onto the market as long as it's a three to five star book. So organically people will be at least okay satisfied with the book that you're putting out there. That's what generally what I would say is a decent quality level for your specific book when we're getting it onto the market. But what do you do? For me, I got my first negative review. And you know what was interesting was that the review wasn't that they hated my book or it didn't deliver the value it promised or, oh, this is a scam or something like that. No, they complained because Amazon failed to properly put it onto their device. Does that make sense? So they were complaining against Amazon and using my book review area to do this complaint against Amazon, which is completely insane when we see that happening. Then comes another negative review against a different book of mine, and this time they're saying they hated the storyline. Well, I didn't publish a non a fiction book. It was a non-fiction book, so there wasn't even a story. So what am I supposed to do with that? I mean, I, I wrote back in the comments under the review and said, this isn't even a non-fiction or a fiction book. So you're writing a, a review against the wrong book. I also noticed that other reviews where people would be giving five-star reviews for similar books like mine, and then suddenly were hitting mine. So I noticed there were people who were being paid to leave negative reviews. This is a way to deal with competition for your book is you hire virtual assistants and have them bomb your opponents, your, your, your competitors books, which is a really dirty, sleazy thing to do. Uh, but, uh, but this is something that people have dropped too, you know, that, that was done in the past. A lot of the virtual assistants today, they'll have a lot of problems because their reviews are continually taken down. So this is a terrible strategy anyways, but in terms of reviews, and this was something that was being done where you'd find somebody who would be leaving reviews for all sorts of random books as five stars and then another books that were like the competitor books as one stars, which is a really terrible thing. And these people never even read the book. The most toxic kind of reviews are reviews where they're very detailed explaining why the book is awful and breaking it down so that they actually can prove they've read the book and not just hated the bookers for some specific reason. But the reviews I was dealing with were not complaining about... You you know, these sorts of things. Another thing people can complain about is the book is too short, but it's listed on the thing how many pages it is. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Our goal when coming out with a book is to deliver the value that we promise. If you say, you know, an exciting fantasy novel for young adults, well, if a young adult reads it, they should find it to be exciting. Does that make sense? So we're not trying to come out with a, you know, the latest and greatest Harry Potter novel. We're, we're trying to come out with something on the market that's going to be meeting or exceeding what the desires of the 
reader who's buying the book. And for a nonfiction book, they have a problem with puppy training. Does our book help them with puppy training? If so, then we've succeeded. Maybe it's a three-star book. They find some grammar errors or things like that. And this is this is what I would call the good enough. And, and that's ultimately the goal. And I recently had somebody on YouTube here comment to say, oh, I can't believe it. You know, there's millions of garbage books being put on Amazon and all you're doing is contributing to one more. Well, we're not talking about garbage. We're talking about books that are getting three to five star reviews when we're when we're shooting for that. So this would be the minimal standard I would be talking about with a book. But even if you put out a garbage book, our goal, they're not going to make sales. So we're going to want to improve on the book so that we can get it up to that standard where it's actually meeting people's things. But sometimes we don't know what the quality of our book. Maybe our book was a five-star re uh, five review book uh, six months ago or a year ago, but we're still, for some reason, continuing to edit this book. It makes no sense, but how would you know the quality of your book and whether it's meeting your readers? desires and their minimum standards unless you've actually put it onto the market. And that's the reason why you will find me saying, look, put it on the market. And the same goes for ads. You could put a terrible ad on the market and then we can fix it. We can see the ads not getting very many impressions, not getting very many clicks. But how would you know? And that's one reason why I don't want things to be perfect. I want things to be on the market and then I want us to improve upon it. The difference between us and a lot of the fake gurus who are like, just throw some garbage books out there and I'm sure it'll make you millions of dollars, which is nonsense, is that I'm telling you, take your books, do the best you can in a reasonable amount of time. Don't use years on this stuff. Put it onto the market and let the market tell you whether the book is good or not. In reality, you're going to find your hardest thing is getting anyone to read the book. And so let alone worried about, oh my goodness, it's a, net, it's a t bad, poor quality book or something along these lines. And again, if you do get one to start, we'll take the book off the market, fix the book, and then put it out there and let's see if we can do a little bit better with your book. So we are not talking about putting garbage books out. What's the point? It's just embarrassing. And two, you're not going to get any sales on it. So, but we will use it to let the market tell us. The same goes if when you're doing content marketing and you're putting a podcast or a YouTube video like this one, or you're putting out blogs on the internet, let people tell you. When I first started putting YouTube videos, I had grainy videos where I was a little teeny picture in the bottom of the screen and I and my and and the audio was was out of sync and it was low quality. And people started telling me that. And so I was working with getting better lighting and better audio recording equipment and better cameras. I'm still working on things. Things like syncing the videos properly so there's it's a continued process so what's my what's my advice for you if you're gonna if you're an author and you're wanting to create YouTube videos produce any videos let your audience tell you what's terrible and slowly improves improve as the money starts to come in buy better equipment listen to your audience and improve and I, I really hope this is important because this is also the key to getting better reviews as well we're not talking about putting garbage on the market and thinking that's gonna somehow be a win for us we're talking about putting anything on the market and then improving upon it. So that's something I really want to stress on this. And I've, I've been pushing it, but I, I do get put, uh, feedback on a regular basis from different uh, v uh, viewers uh, who comment on what well, there's enough garbage being put on Amazon, so I don't want to contribute. So I'm going to use five years in order to you know get everything perfect. So the next thing, though, is, is I was working really hard to get reviews from people who like the book. And that's something I discovered, which is don't tell everybody to leave a review. Tell people if they like the book, leave a review. So uh, um, And you'll find that people like almost anything. So if we if we're continually asking people some of those people are in fact going to leave a review but the thing is we're not hoping that book lovers will review my book in other words we're not just hoping and leaving it to chance that it's going to happen and that's the reason why I started doing things like building email lists and asking people to leave reviews these sorts of things and even giving people advanced copies of books in order to leave reviews you cannot give them like a gift card or something in exchange for review because now you're buying you're paying for a review and that is in violation of Amazon's terms and agreements. The other question that recently came up from one of my coaching clients <clears throat> was the question of, I have zero reviews, what do I do? Well, I've discussed the issue of friends and family and, and the reality is, is, look, if you have no reviews, you're not going to get any sales. So there's that means you're not going to get any reviews. And if nobody buys your book, they won't even hear your call to action in the book to leave a review or to get on your email list so you can ask them to leave reviews. So we have to seed it at some level. So I'm telling you, I probably probably would take the chance asking friends and family to leave a review, not people who are in your very house. But look, your friends and family should try to support your business. <clears throat> and so when you put your book out there and they download, or they buy the, the Kindle version, they have to at least purchase $50 worth of things off of Amazon. But just ask them, <clears throat> 
please support me by leaving a review. And the review should be saying something specifically, a hundred words with proper grammar, run it through Grammarly already, and taking those, uh, taking that review and making sure it says it did it deliver the value. Remember, all books are about solving a problem and their review needs to say, look, I love the book. It solved a problem. So that's what I would do. And one of my coaching clients said, but look, Amazon could have problems if I were to ask my friends and family. But my thing is, is look, if nobody's purchasing your book, who's going to review it? This is you're in a catch-22 here. Amazon's created a little bit, but I'm not, and I'm also not talking about putting out thousands of reviews and then they're taking them down and then paying people or something. We're just talking about asking all of the friends, family, acquaintances, co-workers, uh, whatever it is, club members that you're in clubs with, please purchase the book. That makes it a verified review and then leave a review on that specific book. So th that's exactly what we're actually asking uh, you to do here with uh, with that. Not to get a thousand reviews, but to get at least one or two, please. So, and if Amazon were to ban your account, I, I can't see, this has never happened. Usually they warn people uh, about these sorts of things if they see the person's using your same IP address at your house. But this is, in my opinion, what would be considered fair practice, reasonable use of the of the system. Just asking your friend and family to leave a review. But let's get into it. I got a negative review on Amazon. The first thing is, is that you you need to ask, We the biggest way to counteract your negative review is to make sure that you're getting positive reviews so that we have the total average review being three to five stars. So one review, if you have a five star review, now we have our average of three. So ask inside your book for reviews. If they like the book, please leave a review. You have an entire page dedicated to this request at the end of the book. Okay, you could even do it at the beginning of the book as well, right? And so the thing is, is people need call to action. People simply won't do it. Even here on YouTube, I ask you to do me a favor. If you're finding this content helpful, I've give, done you a favor, you do me a favor, a little reciprocity, hit the subscribe button. If I don't tell you to do that, most viewers will not do it. And so that's one of the reasons, you know, like, share, whatever with these videos in order to make sure that you will actually do those things. If you don't tell people to do it, they simply won't do it. Calls to action are incredibly important. Same goes in your book description at the bottom, call to action. Hit the buy now button and purchase this book. If your description doesn't include those exact phrases in like a header one high level header at the bottom of your book description, you need to get that in there immediately. So that's just a little bit of extra added value for this video. The second thing is never respond to a hostile review, a way to a negative review. So don't do it in a hostile way. But notify Amazon if the review is against, for example, their delivery process or their pricing or whether they charge or didn't charge. It's not your fault if it's an Amazon issue or if the review is completely irrelevant to your book. Tell Amazon about that and ask them. They probably will do nothing, but it's worth a try. And secondly, leave a comment on the review and say, oh, thank you for your comment, but this doesn't seem to apply to my book. I would really appreciate if you took this down since I have no control over the thing you're complaining about. And even if they do leave a, a negative review, never ever get overly defensive. Just say, oh, thank you for your comment or your review, um, but I, I wish you would, uh, you know, reread the book or or I think you must have missed something or I'll make sure I change the book or update it based upon your comments. So it shows other readers who go through those reviews that look, you're reading them, you're taking them seriously and you're going to do something. Same goes on TripAdvisor, for example, for a hotel. <clears throat> they should respond to every single comment that comes in and say, oh, I'm so, I'm sorry you had a bad experience, but we'll do the best we can to improve upon that. Never ever start attacking the reviewer. Number three, and the secret answer of the day is, like I mentioned, build an email list. I use Active Campaign. You can find my link below in the description. It's my affiliate link, so I do receive a small per, uh, portion of the total uh, money that they receive. However, it does not affect your price, and it helps me to keep producing videos like this. So go ahead and check out that. Active Campaign is amazingly easy to use and integrate directly into your website. Uh, easy to create a, a page. You don't even need a website if you want to use them. They'll create a page where you can generate the leads in exchange for people's email address. And once they're on the email list, you can then ask them to review in exchange for early copies of your book as you make them part of your advanced review team. This is by far the most effective way to deal with negative reviews is to flood your books with positive reviews from people who know, like, and trust you and love reading your books. And so that's another and the top secret 
tip of the day. My question for you though is, have you ever received a negative review for your book? If you have, write yes below in the comments. And if you've never received a negative review, write no below in the comments because I need to know where you're coming from and how things are going on the review state for you. And check up above me here for more video answers to your self-publishing questions. Thanks.